Yes, I mean, I, I don't want to speak behind anybody's back, but Fazano talks about a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and that's, that's Fazano talking. I mean, uh, I base myself on evidence and argument and analysis and so on and so forth. And on that basis, I have, uh, you know, no uh, sort of uh, real evidence about uh, the man's sexual behavior. All we know is that he didn't have a loving relationship uh, uh, with any woman. He didn't have a loving relationship with any man either. Yes. And uh, it is also clear from his psychofiction, and especially the blind arm, that uh, his uh, narratives and antithesis <coughs> are obsessed with women. And it is impossible for a homosexual to, to have this kind of obsession with women. He may be obsessed with men. Well, if he was a homosexual, he must have been uh, a closeted homosexual because it doesn't really, he didn't talk about it. Yeah, well, I mean, and there are references, one and no, two. I mean, I, 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 I doubt very much if that is the case precisely because uh, the closet part you find in, if, if at all, you find in the psychofictions, and there, there is this great deal of obsession all the time with women. And, you know, it is unbelievable for anybody, any, any homosexual to have this kind of obsession with women, good women and bad women and that, this and that and the other, rather than with men. Thank you very much. Next question. Yes. Sorry. Next Sorry. Question, I would like just to make a point that probably we could put it in a more technical, I mean, a more academic way, asking whether his works, um, in Hedoyat's works, are, lend themselves to queer criticism rather than just dealing with you know, his personal life, because that's something that might be you know, completely in the dark for us. And most, and most importantly, I believe we should uh, try not to be as, let's say, sensorial as his own, he was, I, I, I mean, as suppressive. As Could you say something more about it than you know, the evidence? evidence? I'm just trying to actually uh, uh, reestate the question that probably mm. the thing we should ask should be to see if his works, of a particular, some particular works, lend themselves to queer criticism that I think they do. Of course, all, 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 all literature might. But the, the point is that whether or not, you know, uh, he, his works show any sign of homosexuality. Probably today we could be more open about that and not to be, you know, sensorial like. Thank you very much. Serve him like he was in his own day. Very good. Can I say something about it? Yes, very good. Because there are a number of other questions. Okay. Yes, please. Can, can I say something? Uh, I think that uh, uh, what you're uh, pointing at, uh, we can uh, talk about Hedoya's work uh, as uh, in relation with what, what I call a constructive marginality. I mean, if you say queer criticism, I, I hear constructive marginality. And uh, uh, though it, there is no clear portray uh, 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 of homosexuality as we find, for example, in the work of Jean Genet, but in the same way as the work of Jean Genet, you can, you can certainly relate to Hegelian's constructive marginality. That was great. Very good. Thank you. In the back. I was wondering if a member of the panel could uh, briefly review uh, the uh, uh, transition of uh, young um, Hedayat to uh, a mature and old Hedayat. I would like to point out particularly to uh, when you read Parvind of Tarisasan, you see evidences of nationalism and uh, thinking about the glorious days of the uh, uh, Persian Empire, which was uh, the uh, uh, the essence of the day, if you will. But later on, it seems that he's uh, disappointed and um, even um, doesn't think that way. And uh, that is another source of disappointment for him. And uh, uh, this transition of young versus a mature writer. Dr. Simitiero, do you want to say something about that? Um, no, I, I will pass uh, the. the <laughs> Should I say a couple of words? Um, uh, let's remember that at the time uh, when, he had, you know, when he wrote Pardon Dr. Sarasan, Marziar, I mentioned them, uh, and Saye, Mughal, and that sort of thing, uh, uh, when he was around the age of 30, 
uh, um, pan-Persian uh, nationalism was uh, very fashionable among uh, uh, the moderns in Iran, about, uh, including uh, intellectuals and young authors and that sort of thing. But uh, to put it very briefly, because it's a long story and I've discussed it extensively in various, uh, various uh, uh, works, but uh, uh, when, uh, uh, first of all, I, I mean, he, on the one hand there is uh, the effect of maturity, intellectual maturity, but particularly uh, when that kind of nationalism, romantic nationalism as I call it, became official, and it became state ideology. Then, of course, people like Hedayat began to uh, uh, maintain a growing distance from it. Mm, that's what I said. Uh, yeah, I just, uh, yes, please. No, you go ahead. Uh, it exactly goes in the direction of what I said. I think in Hedayat we have to distinguish uh, between national consciousness and nationalism as, as an ideology. And I think that uh, uh, what Bozogia said uh, uh, verifies that because uh, uh, once he was, I think maybe uh, Homo Kajuzian knows about it also. He, he was telling me that once they went with Hedayat outside Tehran and uh, in a, in a desert, and Hedayat actually uh, took a, a lighter out of his uh, pocket and he, he just uh, lighted a, a paper. And uh, Bozogi Alevi said, what's the reason of this uh, act you made? And he said, well, I think that there was a, a, a temple, a Zoroastrian temple here. So in the, because of that, I'm, I'm lighting the light again, putting the fire and lighting the fire. It seems to me also that um the anti-Semitism that is sometimes seen in some of the works of Hedoya had something to do with the um, attempts to draw away from religion and to focus on secularism. Um, and uh, this was um, a struggle that uh, went on, um, I think, in many on many levels um, and, and, and in many countries. The, uh, desire to pull away from the um, um, dominant ideology of the state and uh, to uh, emphasize something, to, to emphasize that Iran would have been different uh, had it not uh, been for Islam, for example. Well, if I may just add something to this point, my, my, my own view, and I've written on this, is that uh, Hedayat was intense, intensely nationalist in his early life and was intensely anti-Arab. And that could be, in my view, it's, it's ideological and it's deeply nationalist. Um, but he, he's cured of that in his later writings. So the, one can say that he has gone through this shift of writings that are intensely nationalist and truly racist to one that is really critical of that kind of uh, category of thinking. Yes, the gentleman, right? Hi, my name is Hamida. I think my question is, uh, uh, is kind of dull. It's not, certainly not as interesting as, uh, as the question of sex. But anyway, uh, the question is, uh, I want to ask, and this has always been a question for me. Um, Professor John, when you brought up uh, Edward Said, I want to ask if there is a, if there is any, in what we read about Hedaya and what we hear about Hedaya, I mean, the reason we are all here this evening is there's always this presumption that it's a given that he is the exceptional individual, that he is the uh, genius artist, which he may or may not be. I'm not questioning that, but my question is, is there a way of re-examining uh, Iranian literary modernity outside of the canon of Hedayat? Uh, as Edward Said would suggest we do with uh, the Western canons, uh, is there a way uh, out of that? 